Ultra. We're living in the age of Ultra. This is gonna go into pocket now. Say goodnight to the OnePlus 8 Pro, at least for now. That wasn't on purpose. Or was it? So you guys probably caught my video on the Note 20 Ultra and regular Galaxy Note 20. That was a sort of a quick comparison, uh, kind of impressions type of video. I had some pre-release units that had to go back, but of course I wanted to switch to the device permanently, semi-permanently, because it's exciting, it's premium obviously, and I've been trying to figure out where I wanna put the personal SIM card next. It's been sitting inside of this OnePlus 8 Pro since that device came out. And I got nothing against that device. I, I had a fun time using it, but believe it or not, I don't always switch the personal SIM to every single device that shows up here on the show. That would be kind of crazy because, well, like anybody here on this platform, in the community, you have your favorites that you switch between more frequently, and then you get the devices that show up that you evaluate on a more temporary basis. This Note 20 Ultra just feels like it would be a good fit for a sort of longer trial. And now that I have the retail unit in front of me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a good old fashioned switch video. I'm switching, just like the meme, as you guys might recall if you've been on the channel for a little while here. Yes, I'm switching phones. I'm switching to the Note 20 Ultra. And I'm excited to do so for, well, not just the reason of the, not, not just because the device is exciting and premium and all the rest of it, but because it also has a pen and because it's also gonna have the new style of later case on it because this thing just came out with the whole new styling around the cutouts. I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit here in a little minute, but uh, that's another reason I'm, I'm kind of pumped for it. So let's do the unboxing experience since I didn't have the box before in the previous video. This is what it looks like. You have the pen represented on the front. One of the few devices that you can get in 2020, top tier flagship level with a pen input. I say every single time, I'm gonna try to love the pen. I'm gonna try to use the pen. I'm gonna try to be one with the pen. This time I mean it, I promise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be tapping away. I'm gonna be lying on the couch. Note 20 ultra style because you know, to, to be honest with you, spending this kind of money, you probably wanna use the pen. Mystic Bronze is the color of this unit. Otherwise, it's a fairly nondescript box. We slide off the lid, nice and smooth, and you are greeted by the Note 20 Ultra massive camera module on there with the three camera units. Kind of like how they're all very similar in scale, and it, I don't know, it's kind of like it's nicely lined up. And this one is the glass model. The, if you recall from the comparison video, which I'm assuming you've seen at this point, if not, you can go check it out. The regular, the standard Note 20 non-Ultra, it looks very similar to this, the finish, but it feels a lot different because it's made out of plastic and people were upset, thousand dollar phone with a plastic back. Well, that's not, that's not a problem with the Ultra model. This one is actually gonna be Gorilla Glass and it's actually gonna be that new Victus, Ooh. which, I mean, I'm curious about, I talked about it a couple times on Lou Later. It's the new high profile product from Gorilla Glass, the most robust yet, all kinds of extra drop protection, all kinds of extra scratch protection. So Gorilla Glass obviously always doing big things and this one features their latest. I believe it's the first phone to feature their latest. The pen moved to the other side of this phone, as I mentioned in the quick comparison video. Just notice something interesting as well, manufactured in Korea it states on the device. Now I know Samsung uses factories in a number of different places around the world. Uh, I don't think the majority of their devices are manufactured in India. Often you'll see Vietnam, they recently started manufacturing devices in India. This one is labeled as Korea. So because you have this huge camera module, you are gonna have a little wobble on the table. Let's see if that is diminished a little bit with the later case installation. Maybe, we'll find out. Not much, ever so slightly, but the cool part here is that new cutout style. As you can see, we're calling this the Cyber Edition. You can check out more details on the website. It's not just gonna be for the Note series. We're gonna do Cyber Edition for a number of different series, but what I like about it is it kind of gives it, it kind of gives it a futuristic look, in my opinion, kind of cyberpunky. It just covers the whole back in carbon. You can check it out for the S20 Ultra as well, and even, 
had to show some love for the iPhone people. So there's a cyber edition for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Check the site to find out all about it. Also in the packaging here, we have some stickers. Do not accept if seal is broken stickers, but this wasn't sealed. Very interesting. Very interesting, Samsung. Fast charger, actually what they're calling super fast charger. And again, the models I have for the impression, I didn't have all these extra components. So it's cool to check it out. Kind of strange. This is, it's only a 25 watt charger in the box. You may have expected something faster. Samsung has even shipped faster chargers. In fact, they've also included a travel adapter. For some reason they sent this. I think this might be for the tablet that they also sent over, but uh, this is capable of 45 watt super fast charging. This is 25 watt. You can use their 45 watt product with this phone, but I believe it will still charge at 25 watts. So that could be considered a drawback for some at this price point. There are obviously some faster charging devices out there. That said, <clears throat> that said, some people make the argument they don't need anything above a particular speed because they're worried about battery degradation and all the rest of it. But we have seen a number of the Chinese brands putting out 100 plus watts uh, of charging these days. So uh, some people are gonna be paying attention to that. Anyways, this one is 25 watts. This is their travel adapter here. That's capable of 45 watts and it's obviously a little bit larger, but again, you need a device that's capable of utilizing those 45 watts. So anyways, charging options from Samsung. They also do 15 watt wireless charging. I've always been a fan of wireless charging, so I may go that route as well of course, at the expense of a little bit of speed. Also inside the package, we have a USB cable and it's a typical type C to type C. And lastly, is this anything? This is just a little extra protection in there by the looks of it. Okay, cool. So we have an unboxing experience finally and on camera. I should also mention recently did a video on these guys, the Galaxy Buds Live. And of course, this would be a nice companion for this particular device. You can go check that video if you're curious about these at all. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up. All right, so while that's starting up, we'll take a look around the device. On the top here, you can see we've got our SIM tray, which is actually a pretty wide SIM tray. And then the bottom is where almost everything else is, your Type-C connector, as well as your speaker. And of course, the pen, which is a key component in any note experience. Here's the display. Now, something that occurred to me during my comparison video, Note 20, Note 20 Ultra, was that this display kind of behaved a little bit differently, looked a little bit different than the standard Note 20 version. I don't know, Kirk, am I nuts? Which image looks better here? That one for sure. Yes. Even though this would be the more premium model and have a higher resolution and all the rest of it. So I'm curious now that I have a retail model, if I'm gonna notice the same thing. I mean, it's a very vibrant, obviously a nice looking OLED display. Uh, let's go in here and see. I'm gonna set it to dark, turn off adaptive, motion smoothness. I mentioned this previously but uh, it appears that there's no way to lock it at 120, at least not within the default settings here. I think they kind of want you to keep it in, in adaptive for the purpose of getting the best battery life. Um, but you can, however, lock it in 60 Hertz in the settings menu if you want to prioritize battery life at all times. I'm gonna leave it adaptive for now. Screen mode set to vivid. I wonder what happens if I go to the advanced settings. Now, another thing some people had mentioned in the comments section was that maybe I did not have the video enhancer turned on. So let me just peek for that real quick. Where do they hide that thing? There it is, video enhancer. So I'm gonna turn this on as well. Now that doesn't change anything in the OS. It's only actually going to impact the video player, Google Play Movies and TV, YouTube and Netflix as far as the pre-installed apps are concerned. But that said, I was analyzing YouTube videos, but then I was just analyzing pictures on Google Images. So I don't think that was the issue. You know, the other speculation was that it could have something to do with the new Gorilla Glass. I just think the displays work a little bit differently, behave a little bit differently. And 
Look, saturation is not necessarily a good thing. It's some people, you know, there's a uh, there's a taste thing that goes with it. And some people might like a more subdued display like this one has. And, and by no means is this one lacking saturation. It was just a curious finding that I had between this and the Note 20. Now, the other thing I like to do is enable the maximum resolution. There is a battery expenditure here as well, but I feel like if you have 3,088 by 1440 resolution, you're gonna wanna see it. So that's WQHD plus now, maxed out, very nice. Very sharp. I find when I'm scrolling YouTube, for example, with that extra resolution, you can really, depending how far you hold the phone from your face, but I'll be scrolling thumbnails like somewhere around here and I can actually notice the difference between a high res display. Now, is it the most important thing in my life? No, but I play with these things all the time. So it's something that I pick up on, something that I notice. Now that this is booted up, of course, we're gonna have to go ahead and insert the SIM card. Now, as I mentioned, I, I have been using the OnePlus 8 Pro. I've actually been really happy with this device. I've been happy with battery life. It doesn't have the biggest battery in the world. It's been a good performer though. Uh, so there's some things I'm probably gonna miss on here, including this uh, silence switch, the textured switch that I use all the time. The form factor, this one, I mean, this is a big phone. This is a bigger phone. It feels bigger. It's a little edgier in the hand. The hole punch moves to the center of the display instead of the top corner. It's amazing how big OnePlus flagship devices have gotten where you're talking about a Note Ultra and they're actually close in scale. That's pretty wild. Uh, the speaker performance, which I tested on this device in that quick video that I did prior, uh, I'm actually really impressed with the speaker on this one. I think it might have a slight edge and I use the speaker actually fairly frequently. Display wise, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm kind of noticing the same thing here where the OnePlus display may have slightly more pop to it. The color balance is obviously different as I'm sure you can tell. Now you can shift the color balance on the Samsung side by heading into the settings once again, back to the display. And when I go to here to vivid mode, I can shift the white balance. So it's a little bit warmer than the OnePlus. Let's say I go down to this a little closer to cool on that setting and go back over here. See, I kind of prefer that color balance myself. There's an argument that it might be a little tougher on your eyes, the blue light stuff, but that's uh, more to my taste right there. You also get a sense here for how much bigger the display dimension is on the Note series. It is, a, it is a little bit large. You have this uh, bar at the bottom, which is taking up some of the screen, but you notice it a bit. It really goes edge to edge. It's a, it's a kind of a perfect or closer to perfect rectangle. But I will say, I feel like this has more contrast for whatever reason. I feel like the OnePlus display has more contrast. I felt the same way about the standard uh, Note 20 series. That's kind of interesting. This is the premium flagship model, but it's slightly more subdued display. What else can I say about the OnePlus? Well, the cameras are okay. It's nothing too crazy. I never really got blown away. I've been a bit, uh, I've been a bit lukewarm on the various camera apps and camera software that OnePlus has been using. And it matters less at the sub premium level, but once you get up to like a thousand dollars or close to it, you really start to examine that just with a little bit more attention. I've said previously, I'm into the pixel aesthetic when it comes to just how software treats photos and videos. But this one, I mean, based on my limited exposure to it, it looks pretty promising, particularly what they've done to fix autofocus or improve autofocus from my last major Samsung experience, which was the S20 Ultra. So this is the camera app right here. And I'm gonna go ahead, why not just snap a couple quick photos. Let me just line something up here this is the standard focal range Bang. we have the zoom 5x zoom. and of course the wide now the one that i'm most excited for is obviously the main camera the Standard focal range, the zoom actually came out a bit blurry. Now I'm holding the thing, it's not the brightest in here. And I'm not a huge zoom guy, but that image right there, kind of into that. You have a nice, it's 
sort of roll off with the focus into the background. Another exciting thing about this is the ability to shoot super high resolution video up to 8K actually, rear video size, look at this. 7680 by 4320 and I tested the autofocus in the original video and it actually worked really well and it's just obviously a ton of pixels so that's another exciting thing that I want to experiment with obviously. So for me the story of this phone is the camera and the potential improvements on the camera over the S20 Ultra which was a phone that I liked, the battery life, how that holds up, and then the pen and whether or not I can finally get into, the, into using the pen on a more frequent basis to the point where I, I really feel like I'm getting an advantage from it. They've added some features. Apparently it's more precise now. You can see there's a demonstration here for air actions. We'll see if that ends up taking place. Of course, I'll report back eventually, uh, but it's a premium device. It's not gonna be for everyone just because of the price tag but it will be for me for the foreseeable future because I'm gonna go ahead and insert my SIM card if I can track down the SIM tray, which is, which was on one of these. There it is. Not the SIM tray, the SIM tool. Man, my SIM card has been in that phone for so long. I'm realizing it right now. Oh yeah, forgot to mention the SIM tray has expandable storage. You don't see that as much anymore. It is still here if you're a fan of that. And Samsung is pitching this device as a kind of work device, as a do everything device, as a substitute even for a dedicated computer with DeX or an integration into Windows with their recent collaboration with Microsoft. Of course, there's the gaming side too. I may try out the uh, the xCloud stuff. I think this could actually be a pretty nice device for gaming. Of course, you get the 865 in there. All right. That's official. That's the main SIM card making its way into the latest from Samsung, the high-end Note 20 Ultra in Mystic Bronze, which of course you know I've covered up with carbon because that's the way I like to do it. That's the texture I, I'm looking for. But this is gonna go in the pocket now. Say goodnight to the OnePlus 8 Pro, at least for now. That wasn't on purpose. Or was it? I gotta be over 18 years of age to play this. Listen to the audio though. Yeah. See, now that I've got this game loaded up, I feel like I, I can appreciate the display a little bit more. Cause that OLED looks really nice over here. And this, another thing that you may not pick up on, this hole punch, this front facing camera is tiny. It's the small, maybe the smallest I've seen. The black border around the camera module is incredibly slim. And of course it's even smaller than what they put into the regular Note 20. It's hard to imagine how they could make it even smaller than that is. It, it, probably the next step is just hiding it under the display completely. Do they have a game mode now? They do, check this out. They got the game booster as well. Not a gaming phone, but definitely a good phone for gaming. I mean, what makes a gaming phone? It's hard to say. Big batteries, big displays, fast chip. It has those things. So why not have a game booster, which lets you monitor your temperature, your memory, your battery life in minutes, which is nice to check on. You can also silence your notifications. Let me click on the settings here. Dolby Atmos turn on, change your screen lock time. Change the performance mode, 
refresh rate. It's kind of nice. The auto-generated username was Cumulative Liquid. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Wow, but the sound on here is good. With the Dolby on, it's loud. <laughs> holy, that's holy, that's loud for a phone. Yeah, listen, it's a powerhouse phone with a powerhouse price. I don't think it's gonna win any awards for value for money, but I think the people who are enthusiastic about the Note brand, uh, they're just happy to have the pen stick around with current modern specs. And it's hard to argue that with having access to the pen, if you do use your phone as your kind of main computing device, then it does give you an extra level of precision that your finger can't give you. So I do understand why this series has stuck around and why it's popular amongst a bunch of users. I'm just going to try to adapt to the pen life. I'm going to try even more than I have in the past to see if the pen serves a purpose in 2020. Send me your suggestions why, you know, things you use the pen for and why you think the pen is indispensable if you've been a Note user up until now. But anyways, there you have it. Note 20 Ultra. Ultra! We're living in the age of Ultra. As far as smartphones are concerned. Or Pro. I don't know which is more common. Ultra's going to become more common. Pro? What do you pick? Pro or Ultra? Ultra. You want Ultra yeah, over Pro. Or, uh... Ultra's better than Pro? I mean, Ultra does sound... What's better than Pro? Ultra. Where do you go after Ultra, though? Ultimate. Ooh. You go to Ultimate, and then there's nothing after Ultimate. And then you start going into infin Infinite or Infinity, because mm -hmm. I just can't even measure it. Mm -hmm. Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Infinite. Mm -hmm. It just goes it's on forever. And they've already got a Gal they got Galaxy in there already. Galaxy's big. Universe. Universal.